Welcome to Adepticon. We are here for the artists who have poured their hearts and souls over the last year and even multiple years into amazing and fantastic creations that are entered into this year's Adepticon 2023 Resin Beast. Very psyched to be here. I wanted to get in on the painting and the gaming and just be with my fellow nerds. All the great competitors, all the pieces, that's what I'm most excited about. What's the ultimate outcome for you? Um, if I don't place highly, I at least get some good feedback. It was a really cool looking model and this was an excuse to just put a little more effort into it. Yeah, I'm a complete noob. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to dive in, just go call it the full money, I just went for everything. How many hours do you think you spent on that diorama? Oh boy, uh, probably not enough. <laughs> This contest has been put on by some amazing sponsors who have challenged the miniature community to take their paints and their miniatures and enter them in the contest and put them to the test. Resin Beast is about community. It's about building community, creating community, and having the community have a place to come and, and celebrate together. Creature Caster, Parabellum, Bestiarum, Turbo Dark, Eric's Hobbies, Iwata, and Cuttlefish Colors have all gotten together and they've created an amazing contest. So Resin Beast has multiple categories. The, the category I'm most looking forward to is the diorama. I love, I'm a storyteller at heart and that's what dioramas for me are, they're a little story. For me it's like what I like to see, how they take the art we do for them and then create their own art. We were very excited to be part of Resin Beast. Um, I'm very excited to see all the different entries all the works of art that everybody has worked so hard on. I'm excited to talk to the artists and get their take on, you know, why did they paint it this way? What's their interpretation of it? I look forward the most to seeing, I think, the diorama. I really, it impresses me when people put that care into building a story and a narrative into a miniature. This competition is divided into five categories. Small miniature, medium miniature, large miniature, unit, and diorama. Today we're gonna to introduce you to the competitors in one of our favorite categories, the diorama category. We wanna see what these competitors have done to create these unique stories in miniature form and see who takes home the gold trophy. We are here at Adepticon 2023. This is my first competition, yes sir. I started painting the minute they announced Resin Beast. It's a good motivation to push my painting farther, faster and hopefully get people to see my work. Hopefully someone goes, wow, that was really cool. So this started out as a stump. See, I work at a landscaping place, so I got free reign to go through the brush pile whenever I want. There was nothing over here, so I built this up. And I thought, oh, kind of like 80s movies, you know, there's the claws sticking up and this has become a shrine. She's the priestess at the shrine. Maybe she's summoning something or has some sort of ritual going on as this other demon is coming up the backside, just gonna mutilate it. I guess this piece was a study in OSL. Normally when I do a piece, I pick one thing, what I wanna get better at. And this one was OSL. And that's basically what this piece was, was trying to, for one, build a diorama, because I never built a diorama before. And then uh, two, OSL. Joshua Tungate, I'm from Northeastern Ohio. Um, my, I'm here entering the diorama category for the Resin Beast painting competition. The name of my diorama is Confrontation. My idea was in the lore of Conquest, and the first thing I like to do with anything is I like to kind of read up on the lore and try and understand the world that I'm painting for. So I thought that since a lot of the orders of the um, uh, Hundred Kingdoms, they actually dedicate themselves to protecting the people from some of these higher like uh, threats, uh, I thought it'd be really interesting what if one of them fell to it. So the Priory here has been uh, corrupted. He's taken in the power of war. He's given himself over to it. Um, and so this uh, Order of the Shield member has come to confront him. So the backdraw is on a, on a dark moonlit night. This, this once holy, like venerable knight has come out uh, to confront like this person who's entered his domain. And this knight who, whether he knows him or not, has come basically to, to put a brother to rest. Like that idea of like confrontation, not because it's something you want to do. It's not fighting because like, oh, well, you know, we got to fight. It's fighting because this is something I have to do whether I want to or not. Art that speaks to me the most, especially for the tone that I want, is night scenes. Uh, the idea of dark, a forest or the surroundings kind of pressing in on you. The sense of enclosure, of being trapped. Uh, was a big like, kind of emotional like note I wanted to touch on, so immediately I knew I wanted to do a night scene. Absolutely, so the sword, I decided to make glow because a sword is kind of a symbol of war, it's a weapon, something that's used to hurt. I have never done like non-metallic metal before, and I knew going into a painting competition, I wanted to really stretch my legs with that. In fact, this is actually the first non-metallic metal kind of effects I've tried before. I've spent the most time on the night, I felt like really kind of 
adding as much as I could to his kind of character and telling the story through him as a focus was an important note. My name is Brian Weber. I'm here uh, because I've been wargaming since I was like six years old. Uh, it's a big part of my life. This is the first big uh, tournament I've uh, been to in a very long time. Uh, so this diorama here is uh, more or less inspired mostly by this guy, the predator standing here, the orc. Uh, typically he's got like, uh, he's standing on top of uh, some kind of uh, beast that he's killed, but it was just begging for a fallen enemy right there. I, in my head, I'm titling this piece, uh, Finally Some Good Agam. Agam is a social currency for Dwegholm in this universe. Uh, they just love to fight in war. The better enemies they destroy, the more Agam they gain, the more social currency they have. So uh, yeah, there's just a real basic story going on here based entirely on uh, the pose of the original character miniature there. So for the basing, I kind of just started with getting a little bit of a mound here to kind of lift them up. Uh, as far as the coloring and everything goes, the original idea was that maybe this was going to be some kind of dueling ground that was actually people kind of knew about to come fight about things. I kind of decided to leave that more or less open. I like the idea of having a lot of greenery and the flowers and everything in the grass because it kind of just sets up a really stark contrast to the blood and the violence that's going on over here. There are some really great entries in there. I'm, uh, but yeah, I'm excited to see uh, who wins. My name is Michelle Farnsworth. You're here to talk about my uh, painting project that I call Submit. This is actually one of the uh, Conquest miniatures and he's kind of submitting, but you have your kind of choice of path where it would be kind of more of a pain, kind of a more drugs or death. Your choice. The, um, the flooring I handmade from, uh, from Sculpey. So that takes a lot of testing and it's a whole nother side of the hobby. This one, it was a, it was a love-hate piece. There were a few times I had to put it aside because it was, it was a struggle. I did probably about 12 of these stained glass windows. I was determined to have it look good from the front side and the back side. It's filled with UV resin and then painted over with transparent paints. Knowing kind of, especially with dioramas, knowing when to stop. As we sat down with the contestants, a similar theme began to emerge. Though winning is the goal, there's so much more to entering a competition beyond just victory. The diorama I put in this year, it's very personal actually. I, um, I have some pretty bad health issues that most people know about. For me, this project was more about, you know, you have pain, you have drugs, or you have death. And having cancer, it really is a matter of, there's always pain, there's always a crazy amount of drugs, and if you don't, then you have the third road option, you know, kind of thing where, the drugs are what's, you know, keeping me going, and that's the case for a lot of people out there. So personally for me, that was my journey in telling this particular story, is making those kind of profound choices. My doctor told me about two and a half years ago I had three to six months to live. It makes the work that I am able to put out a little bit more profound. It's always an interesting choice where you end up spending your energy. I always say, I'm not thankful for cancer, I'm thankful for what it's taught me. It's taught me to focus more on myself, the art that I love. You also learn a lot about people. People will, in general, show you who they are. And as a human being, all you have to do is listen. You can't have a contest without judges. Boy, howdy, do we have an amazing team. Every one of them is a titan in the realm of miniature painting. Last year's gold trophy went to Katarzyna Gorask, or Kaha as she's more commonly known. And I must say, having last year's champion judge this year's entrance, I think has really forced competitors to up their game. We also have Kelsey, trophy winner of a previous resin beast and resident creature caster painter. Attention to detail and color theory are my two main things. There's clean work, clean lines, good blending, good use of color. Flying all the way from Greece, where his resume includes, but is not limited to, the box artist and miniature painter for Parabellum Games' is Demo. For me, personally, uh, what I am always searching for in the competition is something that draws my attention, but at the same time keeps my attention. My name is Seth Amson, also known as Hobby Sensei. My name is Vince Venturella. I am known as Vince Venturella, all places that Vince Venturellas are available. I have been judging painting competitions for more than the last decade. Uh, the work that people do is always truly amazing and mind-blowing. What you get out of it are artists who approach this seriously, who, who put their passion, their blood, their sweat, their tears, their soul into it, and you just get these really, really thrilling pieces to judge because there's so much to discover. Things that I look for, thinking outside the box kind of things usually grab my attention, like, oh, they used a computer board and they used it for this, that's awesome, you know, that kind of thing. But when you sit there and you take something and you get daring with it, I love that. 
stuff. There was one where it was a very dark color palette and it had like um, a horse. And uh, I thought that one was pretty cool. That stood out to me. And they pulled that off really well. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, I like that skull. That same glass, the colors, those are pulled off really well. No, that's not exactly easy. Welcome to day two of the competition. The entrants are now closed, so it's time for the judges to begin deliberating. Once those judges have finished categorizing each and every model in each of the five categories, those scores are then aggregated, top and bottom are dropped, and that number is what's gonna give us our winner. I predict we're going to see literally tenths of a point separation between some of these places. It's that close. In judging diorama, I think one of the biggest like things that you have to look for is overall theme and narrative. narrative. Yeah. When you that look at the piece, the story yeah. needs to be like clear yeah. immediately because you're looking for something that immediately invokes a feeling or like something specific. So is there a, a one that immediately spoke to you in that manner or do you want to divulge those secrets? I think I'll keep those secrets to myself. The brilliance about this category is that it is a storyteller. And I, I do look at um, several of these pieces and I can hear a story. Some are a little bit harder to read. Um, and that, I think, is probably going to be the decider for the judges. These are people's, like, souls they're pouring out for you. They put hours, days, weeks, months, years like they're trying to show you something about them. And the least you can do is give that the attention that it deserves, that shows the respect for them as an artist. It's finally here, it's Saturday night, the vendor hall is starting to close down, and a crowd is starting to gather to hear the results of the Resin Beast competition. There are so many fantastic entrants in this diorama competition. I am super excited and really, really on the edge of my seat as to see who is gonna take this home. We really have no idea. The competition is so close. All right, it's incredible to see so many people here. That's uh, really amazing. We are going to announce the winners for the Resin Beast. I've talked to lots of artists. No matter how good or great their piece is, how much time they've put in, how beautiful everyone thinks it is, there's still that moment of doubt of like, are they really gonna call my name? Like, is this really gonna, you know, is it gonna work out? It would be nice to, to win a prize or to do well, but as long as I get some kind of feedback that can help me grow and then I can bring that next year, I think that's gonna be priceless. Very, very cool. Feeling very nervous. Uh, there's always a lot of stiff competition out there, so I'm just, I'm just happy to earn a little bit of recognition and uh, Place up with uh, everybody else in their great paint jobs. So we're going to do the diorama first. Joseph North Ober back to the stage. Joshua Tungate. And Michelle Farnsworth. We're going to do this time, we're going to do silver. First, that's Joshua Tungate. Congratulations. The bronze for Diorama is going to Michelle Farnsworth. And the gold in Diorama, Joseph Orthober. Bronze for my large, uh, gold for my Diorama, and silver for medium. It's a pretty amazing. I don't know how to feel about it right now. A little baby later. I can see it in your face. It hasn't quite sunk in yet. It's it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. Give it your best and let it fall where it falls. But this is I've only been painting for two years. This is the first painting competition I've ever entered. Two years. Two years. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Honestly, so excited to hear from these judges to hear how I can go further next time. I already have ideas in my mind of like I think dark pit backgrounds might be my thing because be. that's all I'm picturing is right. just all of this kind of cool stuff with night scene. This year's Resin Beast has been truly amazing. Best entries, widest amount of entries uh, of quality that I've seen. It was an absolute pleasure to judge. Then in the future, I can't, I want to just see it. I'm excited to see what that future holds. I, despite everything that's going on, I have every intention of being here next year. I have very big aspirations for my Resin Beast entry for next year. It's going to be awesome. As a team, we have been humbled and inspired by the stories of the artists and their art that they've created for this competition, the Resin Beast. Make sure to check out the Resin Beast on the web or in the link in the description below.
On behalf of all of us here, all of our sponsors, and all of the team here at Play On, this is JT McDowell saying, until the next time we see you, Play On.